Hello again, everybody. Barefoot Defender, this is Stephen Williford, and today we have a, another guest today, and we're gonna to talk to him about suppressors. This is uh, Thomas Trevino from Double T Tactical. And um, a lot of our viewers, you know, have misconceptions about suppressors and what it takes to get a suppressor, and they have questions like, how long does it take before you get your suppressor? And, and I don't know that there's definitive answers to those questions, but uh, we'll talk about that and, and the process, and we'll talk about trust. You know, you hear a lot of people talk about trust and, and uh, what's a trust and why you should have a trust if you have a suppressor. Some people say, oh, I don't want a trust. Um, I, I personally suggest it. I have a suppressed rifle. Uh, and I have a trust. Uh, so that being said, welcome. Thank you, sir. Um, suppressors are regulated under the National Firearms Act of 1934. Um, it was originally legislation to reduce the number of machine guns and short barreled rifles. And as a matter of fact, suppressors weren't really part of the conversation until the actual law got written and was passed. So since 1934, um, certain classes of firearms and firearm accessories have been regulated by the NFA. Uh, suppressors, short barreled rifles, and transferable machine guns uh, are all completely legal to own in states that they're legal in. Uh, certain states have restricted suppressors, SBRs, machine guns, but if you're in a state that they're legal to own in, uh, they're actually fairly easy to acquire. Um, there's a ton of paperwork, relative um, and there's a $200 tax that goes along with them um, a lot of people think you have to have a special license or an annual fee or something known suppressors and that's really just wrong um, I, I would like to say at this moment that I personally believe that the NFA la uh, NFA law is just bogus to begin with that, that it, you know it goes against our Second Amendment and I'm just gonna put that out there right now I am not going to disagree with you on that at all. I understand what the word infringed means. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people out there don't understand what infringed and shall not be infringed means. And, and that being said, even especially when you talk about suppressors, um, that in Europe, if you can get a gun, which most, it is really hard to own a gun, they consider it uncivilized if you shoot that gun without a suppressor. True. Um, in most of the civilized world uh, where firearms are legal, suppressors are actually considered a common courtesy. Um, they're considered uh, rude to shoot unsuppressed. Uh, in the Caribbean, the island of Montserrat is French. Well, you're allowed to own a 22 caliber firearm on the island of Montserrat, but it must be suppressed. By law, you have to have a suppressor. Um, New Zealand, we all know about New Zealand's gun control laws and everything, um, but New Zealand has some of the highest suppressor ownership uh, in the world because it's just considered a common courtesy. Um, in the past few years here in the United States, we've actually had the American Medical Association, uh, other physicians groups, uh, audiologists, um, OSHA, which handles occupational safety, um, have all come out in support of common ownership of suppressors for hearing protection. Um, a suppressor doesn't do anything to a firearm other than reduce the sound level of the muzzle blast. Um, it's a muffler just like on your car. Oddly enough, the gentleman who designed the muffler designed the suppressor first. <laughs> Hiram Maxim uh, was a firearms designer developer. He developed it, the Maxim machine gun and a few other things, but he also designed the suppressor which later they adapted suppressors to go on cars. Interesting facts. <laughs> um, so people have uh, misconceptions about trusts and prior to 2016, um, a trust was a convenience because nobody had to go through a background check. After uh, President Obama changed um, the policy on trust, now everybody on a trust has to go through a background check. Uh, People want to claim that buying a suppressor on a individual 
uh, Form 4 versus buying a suppressor on the trust is faster. And honestly, I haven't really seen that difference in the industry with uh, processing times to get a trust back or an individual. Um, the greatest advantage of a trust. Now, I'm not an attorney. This is not legal advice. If you have questions, consult an attorney who specializes in trusts. Um, I do sell trusts. They are prepared by an attorney. But if you have specific legal questions, consult an attorney who is familiar with the NFA first. But um, on the extreme end, the reason for buying a trust, I view it as similar to car insurance. Um, NFA regulated items can only be accessed by people who have been through the background check and are on approved paperwork for that item. Um, in the extreme case, if the government wanted to show up and say, you know, Mrs. Williford, can we see your husband's suppressor? And you had it on an individual tax stamp and your wife went to the gun safe and produced your rifle with the suppressor on it, she would be in uh, uncontrolled access of an NFA regulated item. That can carry a fine and penalty of up to 10 years in prison and $50,000. So for just general common safety, a trust is more practical to protect everybody in your home who may have access to your item. Um, it also facilitates uh, sharing with family members. If one of your sons wanted to take your rifle to the deer lease and you were gonna be at work or out of town, if it were owned as an individual item, he couldn't borrow it. But on a trust, if he is on the trust, he can, take that firearm from your possession into his possession and go shoot it or go hunt deer or whatever. Um, so there are multiple benefits to a trust and not really any serious drawbacks that I can think of. So as someone coming into your shop and saying, you know, uh, Thomas, I'm a first time buyer. I want a suppressor. Um, so the first thing I prefer to to be very consultative on my selling. Um, so the first thing I recommend somebody is, of course, a trust. Uh, the trust is kind of the initial thing you need to do. Um, basically 10 questions you fill out. Uh, I send it off to my attorney's office and they send me back the prepared documents. Uh, once that's happened, um, you get it notarized so that it's dated and signed and everything. And then you have your trust established. Um, after that point, there's different ways of processing paperwork. Uh, some people do it electronically, some people do it manually. Um, some people prefer to fingerprint themselves. Other people like Silencer Shop has a kiosk with an electronic system so that all of your paperwork can be done electronically. Um, so depending which route you wanna go on paperwork can make it a little more cumbersome. Um, so once a trust is established, then you have to decide what type of suppressor you want. Um, the $200 tax isn't going to change. That's fixed cost. But do you want a simple, small 22 rimfire suppressor for a pistol or a Ruger 1022? Uh, do you want something to put on your deer rifle that's 300 Win Mag rated? Uh, for people that own transferable machine guns, they're looking in the market for uh, full auto rated or belt fed rated. Um, there's readily 20 different brands that I have access to on, on any given day. LaRue here in Texas. LaRue is made here in Texas. Uh, LaRue makes suppressors. Uh, Radical Firearms out of Houston has started their own suppressor line. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep, Radical offers suppressors now. Um, Crux uh, was in Texas. Liberty, um, Texas Suppressor Systems. Um, suppressed Weapon Systems. Uh, you don't have to have a suppressor that's removable. Suppressed Weapon Systems makes full integral rifles where the barrel is actually a suppressor. So you can actually have a suppressor built onto your rifle. And I know what you're grabbing right now. Uh, Daniel Defense out of Georgia, they have a line called their ISR line. Um, specifically, this is Stevens DD ISR M4 in 300 Blackout. This is my Daniel Defense. It has a internally suppressed barrel. The advantage of having the Daniel Defense with the internally suppressed barrel is it's 16 inches. So now 
rather than having a short barreled rifle and having to do a stamp fee for that, and then a suppressor screwed onto it and having a stamp fee for that, that makes this a one stamp rifle because the only thing you're stamping is the fact that it has a suppressor on it. And it's 16 inch, so it is now legal. Mm -hmm. It's not considered a short barreled rifle, it's just a rifle. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming out and clearing up any questions that you might have. Uh, if you have questions, uh, ask us. We will get to them as quickly as possible. And we're, we are going to talk a little bit uh, more in the future with um, Oliverson, Tom Oliverson. He is a state representative and he wants to do a made in Texas law. And we'll uh, talk to him about that and I encourage you to go out and look it up and um, talk to your state representative and, and support of Tom Oliverson's bill. Thank you very much Thank Thomas. Thank you for having me and, here. It is and always it's, a pleasure to come out and shoot with it's you. It's great to see you again. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, we've got some exciting things that are going to be happening and, uh, and some good guests. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. That's fun. Oh, what fun it is. So this is actually a registered transferable machine gun. There are civilian legal transferable machine guns out there. Uh, so this has a three position safety. It's got what's called the third hole pin or the third hole drilled right there over the safety. Uh, the owner is out here on the range. So this is completely within NFA guidelines. Um, it's an OSS Helix suppressor on the end. It is full auto rated. Um, OSS has a low back pressure uh, suppressor, so AR-15s put a lot of gas back in your face. So I'm going to put a few shots off, semi-automatic, so you can hear the quality of the suppressor. And then we're going to have a little bit of fun with what's called the giggle switch.